Well, g'day and welcome to the channel. I'm in central Victoria and I've come to this lake. It's a massive lake and I've spotted a couple of pelicans just down here on the water. So let's go for a walk and see if we can photograph these pelicans. I'm going to be using the 100 to 400 two times converter of the adapter and the R5. So let's see what we can get with that. All right, so you might not be able to see them, but they're just over here. The sun's actually coming from my left this way, so I need to walk up this peninsula. So I'm gonna try and walk to this big dead tree. Oh, there's actually a... I think there's a brown falcon or a um, kestrel on this dead tree, so we might try and loop around and see if we can't get closer. I'm not sure, this big dead tree here, there's a raptor sitting, pretty sure it's a kestrel. All right, so I've, I've walked around a little bit and the kestrel's still there. Oh, this is better. Okay, so we've got the kestrel on this dead tree. It's not looking at me. Just need it to turn around. There we go. Alright, so we got some shots of it perched, it's dropped down into the water and then it's flying back up. So I might just walk around, we might be able to set up and get some flight shots. So the kestrel is in the top of the tree at the moment, way too high to be getting a photo, but I'm just going to watch it and see what it does. Because if he flies down and captures something and comes back, there's a chance of a flight shot. So the kestrel has gone down to the water. It's caught, I think, a big dragonfly. As it's flying back, I've simply just held up the camera. I've got the IAF engaged on the R5. We've got the two times converter. It was able to pick up the bird. It struggled, I must admit, but it picked it up. I rattled off a few shots, and I think I might have got one of it in flight coming back to this tree. Um, it's pretty incredible that with 800 F11 two times, the autofocus of the R5 can actually still pick up the bird. So the settings I used to capture the bird in flight I was at two thousandth of a second, which is really fast, but you have to have that fast shutter speed to freeze the action as the bird's flying. My maximum aperture is f11 with the two times, so that's sort of wide open, and I used an ISO of 1600, which some people might think is high, but I'd rather have a high shutter speed um, than a low ISO in circumstances like this. So hopefully that two thousandth of a second has enabled me to get the flight shot. At the moment, it's at the top of this tree and the angle. So what you'll find is if you photograph birds at the top of trees, the angle just makes it awful. So I'll take a shot of it now and you'll see what I mean with the angle. It's just way too steep. So the angle's just too steep for us to get anything decent. Still cool to have the bird there and to take a photo. It's flying off gone. It's hovering over here. Oh, that's a shame. Okay, it's flown into a tree into the middle of the lake, so that's all we were going to get. All right, so I think I've got a, I think I've got a pipit on this tree here. We'll just try and get a little bit closer if it'll let us. I think it's a pipit. Or it's a lark. Basically a little brown job, whatever it is. <laughs> I'm still a fair distance away. I'm sort of going for a portrait just because it's more interesting on this dead tree. As you can see, I'm just getting closer and closer. Okay, so we've got pretty close. And it's still at the top of this tree. I hope you saw there that I actually spotted this tiny bird 
on the top of this tree over here and I've just walked towards it, taken some shots, walking towards it, taking some shots and just call them insurance shots, you know. I don't know when the bird's going to fly off so I'm just trying to get shots at every opportunity. I can still see the kestrel flying around because there's a lot of dragonflies in this long grass so I'll keep my eye on it just to see where it goes. Um, just keeping my eyes open for any birds landing anywhere. All right, so my mate, the kestrels, back up in this tree here. Again, the angle is just too steep. All right, so one way to get around the really steep angle is just to walk backwards. So the bird will be smaller in your frame, but the angle won't be as great. So the further back you go, the more pleasing the angle will be. So how about we walk backwards and see if we can't improve this angle. All right, so this is a much better angle. I'm further away, but the angle is much nicer. So it makes for a more pleasing photograph. So we'll just see what sort of shot we can get. It's just preening at the moment. So you're often better off having the bird smaller um, just for that pleasing angle. There's nothing worse than a real steep angle. All right, so I'm just gonna take a shot at 200 millimeters and a shot at 800 millimeters and show you the difference. It's quite substantial. That's 200. That's 800. There's plenty of raptors in Australia. I just haven't had that much luck. So it's nice seeing this one just chilling out in the tree. Um, I'm hopeful that I might be able to follow it around and get it on a lower perch. That would be ideal. Without a blue background would be nice. I guess the other beauty of this lens is it's very light. You can handhold this um, long periods that's for sure it's landed on a rock Oh, it got the mouse, did it? <laughs> so I think the kestrel got a mouse, but it flew up into a tree just over here. Got a couple of shots, I was too far away, and now it's flown into the middle of the lake. But, um, that was pretty cool. So I just had a quick look on the camera. It wasn't a mouse. It was actually, it looks like a baby welcome swallow or some little bird that it actually caught. You can definitely see that it's caught a little bird. Shame I wasn't a little bit closer, but that's the way it goes. Still pretty cool. All right, seems to be a popular tree. The glass are in this tree here. Pretty cool if they stay where they are. So the female galah has a pink eye, the male galah has a black eye. I'm assuming this is a pair. So I'm not a big fan of that white branch that's coming out to the left. I don't think there's anything I can do about it. The only way is to walk wider. So I was taking some shots of the uh, galahs at this angle here and we had the branch to the left. I wasn't quite that happy with it. So what I've done is I've actually walked all the way around to the other side just to change the angle, change the composition. And this is the shot we ended up with. We had both birds out on the perch. You know, often it's just a matter of walking around and finding the best composition. So the kestrel's back fairly low. So let's go over there and see if we can't get another shot of it. Still not happy, so let's keep moving. Okay. Okay, now we're cooking with gas. This is really nice, we're getting some good quality now. Just need to get a little bit closer. All right, we've 
I've got an over-the-shoulder pose. This is probably the closest I've been all day. I'm just going to keep pushing. Oh, it's off. Okay, dropped down and got something to eat. Oh, how good is this? How good is this? This is beautiful. All right, so we've got some nice poses there on that upright. He's gone back to the water and he's flying off. So the bird's allowing a fairly close approach, I must admit. So um, again, the biggest issue is just our angle. It's a little bit high. Oh, there's a rosella. Oh, I missed it. Seems to be a popular tree, this one. <laughs> Oh, that was cool. Um, what a beautiful bird. Now, I know the male and the female kestrels do look different. I just can't recall which is which. Yeah, how good's this? Beautiful evening. The, the sun's obviously shining. It's a little bit warm. Got a few birds flying around. This kestrel's an absolute highlight, that's for sure. Okay, we've got great crested greaves. They were way out, but I think they're doing some sort of mating dance. <laughs> It's a shame they're so far away. So there's a few birds way on the, in the sort of in the middle of the lake. The land does come around. So I might go for a walk. These two birds are swimming towards them. I'm gonna go over there and just give it a crack. All right, so just to give you a bit of context, the greaves are out sort of straight ahead of me, quite a ways away but that's all water there. So I'm gonna walk around and then make my way towards them. Hopefully I'll sort of push them that way so I've got the light. I don't want them to come this way because then I'm against the light. So we'll get cracking. So I get, often get asked why I wear these boots when I'm walking around. It's mainly for snake protection because I just don't know if there's a snake in this long grass. So fingers crossed there's not and I'll generally move um, but you just don't want to startle one. I'd much rather have these on, um, just to give me that little bit of protection, just in case, but fingers crossed we don't. So I guess part of bird photography is just knowing when to quit, and I need to quit. I've walked into the swamp and the birds just keep moving away, so it's just a fool's errand. I'm not going to get anywhere near these birds, so I need to go back and see if I can find something else. It's a bit of a shame because the Great Crested Creeb is a beautiful bird. Um, another day I'll get to photograph that stunner, so but for today I need to go and find something else. So a black-faced cookie shrike flew to one of these far trees and I've walked after it and it just went from tree to tree. I tried to get close but sorry I didn't take you with me, it's just happening too quickly. Um, I got a few shots but I think I was a little bit far away. I'll have to check to see whether we can crop them. It'll be an interesting exercise just to see what that image looks like. How good is this? <laughs> Bird photography on my own, out in nature, the sun's up, birds are about, got my camera. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. <laughs> it's just amazing. Okay, there's a pipit on the stump over here that we need to check out. Let's go and have a look.
So I had a problem, the pivot was on the stump and when I held the camera to my eye, I couldn't actually get the green background, I was getting the sky. So luckily with the flip screen, I simply just put it above my head like so, L looked, got, looked it through the viewfinder, where are we there, held it up high and just used the IAF, looked at it, took some shots and by doing that enabled me to get a nice green background. So that probably brings the end to today's session I think. Um, the sun's definitely just about to go down behind the horizon. I'm not seeing any other birds, so it's been a wonderful afternoon. The two times on the um, 100 to 400 has worked, well, flawlessly, really. The autofocus has been fine. It's a bit slow, but um, I'm confident that we still got some really nice shots today. That extra reach is really nice. Of course, I had beautiful sunlight, which helped us get really good quality. So overall, pretty happy with how it performed today. I'm glad I got some shots in the bank that we can compare later on. Look, if you enjoyed this um, video, give me that thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. Thanks again to my members. Until the next video, take care. See you later.